The project is complete, and I'm ready to render a final product. Before I consider the job finished, I'll render the project and then review it in a video player to check for needed correction. All right, so I'm going to talk about exporting and then proofing, which is a step towards the final render that I do whenever I complete a project. This is a project I, fi I finished here a while back, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit my export. And I already have some destinations for it. This is one of them. I'm going to go ahead and aim this probably to just the folder in general. And I'm going to change the name since I'm just and I'm also going to change the folder. Let's go there. I'm going to hit save. All right. The format that I usually use, and I'm not going to really go into the formats and things like that here. This is the only one that I use. I'm going to put everything generally out to YouTube or my website. They're going to be in 1080p. Sometimes I do a 720. I'll talk about the 720 later. And I could choose the 720 or 1080. I usually do 1080. Uh, there's no reason for me really to do a 4K with this kind of stuff. So I just go with the 1080p. It's the H.264. It's going to reflect all my audio settings that I did originally with the recording. And it'll have my uh, screen sizes there. So all that's going to be pretty much set. I don't really mess with these controls much. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start the export. <laughs> hits 100%, there's still a little lag because it's finishing up, actually creating the file, doing a lead out or whatever it does. So once I have a successful export, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button here to play it. A misunderstood and controversial... Pause that for a moment. I will go back to edit. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to the very beginning. At this stage, I usually have two monitors that I'm working with. On the left, I will have the media player. And on the right, I will have Pinnacle Studio. And I will be watching the playback. And when I run into a problem, I can switch back over to Studio and correct the problem. And what I'm looking for mostly is first of all, I'm going to take a look at the text. And with the text, I want to make sure that my row spacing held, my alignment on the left held. And what I'm really looking for more than anything are typos. And that's very common. So right here, the word statements, I missed an E, so I have to go over there and change that. Now, what I'll do is I will just immediately pause the video playback, go over to Pinnacle Studio. I will go to this title, edit it, and change that right now. And then I'll save it and then keep playing in the media player. Here, the word apostles is misspelled, so I had to change that. None of this is a big deal. And here I had to change the word birth. It came out Bert. So those are some pretty common things. The other thing that I'm looking for is for the placement of the text in relation to the graphics. In the editor, everything will look fine. At some point, things may appear differently in something like the Windows Media Player. A graphic might be shifted usually to the left or right, not so much up and down. The text could shift and actually be over the top of a graphic, and that might create a problem. 
And that's a minor fix. All I have to do is go over to Pinnacle Studio and just create a little bit of room. Every now and then, I might have to slightly resize a text box. I don't change the size of the font. I just resize things. Here's another example where the book is right here. The text that I'm trying to wrap around this might be a little too close, might be too far away. The book might drift a little bit. These are rare things, but they do happen. And when they do, it's not a big deal. But I'll go ahead and make the adjustment and then go back and save the file, come back to the video player and keep watching. This section here was a pretty good example of something that I completely changed. Now, this particular area is a motion background that I put in a title. And of course, I've got my section title up there at the top. The two lines here in blue and orange. After I got them in there, they really didn't look that great. They're really wide covering the entire screen. It really detracts from the motion behind it, and it detracted from the section title up above it. And I just really didn't like the look. I tried squeezing them in a little bit, but two separate little paragraphs there stacked on top of each other, even though they were placed appropriately, to me just didn't look good. So eventually what I did was I went back into the editor and I just deleted these two. And that wasn't a problem because these are direct lines out of the script. So by taking them out, it's like losing closed captioning for a second. It really didn't do any damage to anything. And as far as I'm concerned, it improved the look of the actual video. So the other thing that I look for, again, is going to be the placement of the graphics in relationship to each other. So I did use my grid and I lined up my ovals here. I lined up the arrows fairly well. I actually got them sized so they look about the same. And the book is fine as well. Now, what can happen is there might be some drifting in any of these graphics. And usually it's slight. I don't want to say it's anything really big. It's usually a minor drift, either left or right, sometimes either up or down. If it's going to drift, it's usually going to be towards the edge or down. That's generally been my experience. And again, that's a very, very short fix. I just go over to Pentacle Studio, give it a little bit of room. The other thing that I look for too is like the OT and NT here inside this oval. In the video editor or the title editor window, they may look just fine. After they're rendered, things can change. So these might look too big. They might look too small. They might be off center. The timing might not be good if I've got a transition on them. Text might come in too far away or too close. All of those things are very, very minor. Takes seconds to fix. It's not a big deal. And it never really uh, causes a delay in finishing a project. A list like this next to a graphic. The graphic generally will stay where it's at. The problem that I might run into is I might realize that the text is too close. And I won't really see the actual placement of some of this until after I've exported it and I have a final render. So this one came out pretty good. Sometimes I've had to come in and make some adjustments with two line text boxes. Sometimes they look a little too jammed up. I might decide sometimes to split a list like this in half and put it in two boxes just to give some room for these things. So again, I'm going to look at alignment on the left. I'm going to look at the row spacing. And I especially look at the row spacing if I don't use the Pinnacle Studio tool to actually create that spacing between the rows. If I'm manually spacing the rows, I definitely want to recheck it and make sure that they look even because that can really detract from a presentation. Same thing here. The graphics could drift. Uh, I might come back in and say, oh, this arrow here, I might stretch it out a little bit, bring it a little bit closer here. Uh, maybe the arrow here is too close. 
I like these, and I'm going to leave them there, but these are things that can happen. The pink arrow here coming over and pointing directly into the page, that's fine. Uh, I might decide that something like the book here might be a little bit too small, and I can enlarge it, or if it's large, I can decide to make it a little bit smaller. So those are just minor things that are really cosmetic details at the very end of a project. Again, a list with a graphic. I didn't try to wrap this one, but I definitely want to check the alignment and I want to check the spacing from the graphic. I don't want everything to look just totally crowded up on the screen. I want it to look open. I want it to look readable and I want it to have a, an overall uh, good design. Same thing here. Sometimes with this uh, picture or pictures like this, the text can really crowd in because here it's kind of a trade-off. I'm trying to make the text big enough to be readable. I'm trying to make the picture big enough to actually draw attention and be part of an overall design. And so sometimes it's kind of a trade-off. Trying to wrap text around a picture or trying to space things so that they look good can be a little bit of a challenge. It doesn't really take too long to straighten those kind of things out or get a look that I want. This is fairly simple. It's one paragraph. I put it right there. It's a little bit tight, but it's going to be okay. Another list. Again, this is the same concept. When I'm coming down here and spacing things around another graphic object, when it rendered and during the playback, are they too close? Are they too far away? If they are, I go and make a slight adjustment. Usually a one-time adjustment does the trick. I don't usually have to go back and do anything else. The only time I really have to go back and do anything else is if I decide to change the design of that particular title. That's rare, but I have done it. Now, this one here is kind of an interesting case. The big thing I wanted to look for here was not just the placement of the graphics, the, the Bible there with the rays of light coming up and everything. That's actually one picture that I'm using as a background. When I put the text out front, what I want to make sure is that this is visible. I don't want very, very light text on top of a light background. If I want to use a light text on a lighter background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and put a shadow in there, make sure that it's a dark shadow and make sure that the shadow is large enough to actually create some separation there. Too many times people put light text on light backgrounds or dark text on dark backgrounds, and they're completely unreadable. And that really is a, a design flaw. This entire process is fine of my export and proofing. Once I get to the point that I'm happy with the look, I may have to export this two, maybe three times before I get everything worked out. The biggest thing that happens is I keep missing misspelled words. I think this particular video here, I made four runs through it before I got all of the misspellings. This was a 30-minute video. I watched it at least five times. I watched it in real time. I didn't cut any corners there, so five times 30, that's 150 minutes. So that's three hours of watch time. But when I'm done, I have a presentation that's exactly where I want it, and everything's going to look good. All right, so that's the export and proof. I do all of that out of Pinnacle Studio. If you are happy with that result and the audio sounds fine, you're done. That's it. There's, there's nothing else to do except go ahead and post that to YouTube or your website or distribute that or use it anywhere, you're done. I have another step that I go to, which is another layer, and I call that my final render, and I'm going to cover that next. The final step in preparing the presentation after editing and proofing the video will be to process the final product. I'll show how I use Studio as an intermediate step in post-production for a Master H.264, a high-quality 1080p version for YouTube, and a 720p video for Facebook. I'll explain why I follow this path. 